Well, this evening I thought I'd have a look at this Clark Airmaster compressor. Now, I bought this probably 20 years ago, but it's not seen a great deal of use. But lately, even for the last few years, it's been reluctant to fire up in cold weather. Now, it refuses to spin up altogether. And I was just about to bin it and give up on it when I look on YouTube and found that these startup capacitors can pack up. When I remove the side cover, this had a look. As you can see, it's not looking great at all. I'm not quite sure what this is that's oozing out of here, but I won't be touching it. So I will take the details off here. Being careful to bear in mind that these capacitors can still store power in them. So I'll have to be a little bit wary of that. So I'm going to order another one of these and see if it'll bring this compressor back to life because if it does that'll have saved me a fortune seems a shame just to throw away the entire compressor when it could be something as simple as swapping this out which is held on with just one clamp and two connectors on the top so I'll take a photo of the order of the connections I'm not quite sure if it matters or not but I'll make sure I do it the same when I get a replacement and then fingers crossed it'll bring this compressor back to life the symptoms with this one were that if you switch it on it would turn over slowly but it wouldn't wouldn't it it just wouldn't fire up at all it would trip the, the trip out there and then all below the fuse in the in the plug and like i say the last couple of years or so it's been very reluctant to start up when the weather's cold um, but in the warm weather it'd be okay but of late it won't fire up regardless of the ambient temperature so a little investigation brought me into looking at the capacitor looking at the state of that I can't imagine it does a great deal of you know great deal of good anymore so I'm hoping swap that out go and have a look on eBay check these numbers and see what I can find well a few days have passed and I'm hoping in here is a replacement for this capacitor which as you can see is looking a little second hand, the 40 microfarad capacitor, start capacitor, there are run capacitors and start capacitors. So uh, let's go and get this one unpackaged and we shall see if it will do the job or not. Hopefully fix this, I was going to, I was getting to the point of actually taking this to the tip because I was fed up of tripping over it. But I thought I'd just do a little bit of research and just see if there's a simple fix to get the old girl going again and I'm hoping this new capacitor will be that fix. So let's see what we've got in here. Okay, and this is what we've got. 40 microfarads, 450 VAC, 50 to 60 hertz. All the numbers match the, the Duffold capacitor. So let's go and see if this will fit on. It has the terminals on there which aren't marked. So I'm assuming you can put them on either way. Obviously, I am not an electrician, so if you don't know what you're doing, do some research on how to handle these, because I know that the capacitor that has been in use has to be handled quite carefully, just in case there's still some uh, energy stored in it. So you do have to tread carefully. There are other videos on YouTube which I'd recommend checking out before having a go at fixing your compressor. This is just a quick record of what I've done to hopefully fix mine. So let's go and get this installed. We'll get the uh, extension cable and see if the compressor will fire up or not. If it doesn't, it's off to the tip. But if it works, then great. That saved a, a stack of money because this was only about seven or eight pounds delivered. So hopefully that'll do the trick. Right, well that's installed. I had to gaffer tape on the end cover here just for the terminals because this, the new capacitor is a slightly larger diameter, fractionally larger than the original, so this wouldn't slide back over but it does protect the electrical connection, so it's probably a good idea to have it on. So that's back on, secured, and I'll put this side plate back on. I don't know what's happened to these blades, well, never mind. So let's go and see if this will actually fire up now. Right, power is on. That's all connected up. I haven't put the top cover on yet, but I will do. The trip is off, so let's see if it works. <laughs> I 
promising. Let's just make sure that wasn't a, a fluke. Yay, result. So, this might not work in all cases, but if you need to fix your Clark air compressor, or indeed any air compressor for that matter, rather than throwing it away, just have a look at the capacitor that's hidden away there. Because that is how mine was looking. Various bulges and the interior making a bit of freedom. So seven or eight pounds delivered. There's the new one. And it works. The compressor is back running again. So hopefully this will be of use to anyone out there who needs to have a go at fixing their own compressor. It may not work, but for a few pounds, instead of another 180 quid to replace the whole compressor, it's worth giving it a try. But like I say, just go carefully when handling these once they've been disconnected, because they can still store energy in them, and you could come a cropper. So read up on how to handle these before you mess around with any electrics, and obviously when you're doing all this you want to make sure that nothing is connected to the mains power. So there you go, hopefully that was of some use anyway, and it might just save a few people unnecessary expense. Thanks for watching.